Hey friends, it's Susie and today I got an upgrade because I'm not working in Wendy's. I'm working at a coffee shop. Just wanted to give you guys a video today on making sure that the kids know what in the world they're supposed to be doing in your class. <laughs> As a current parent of, I said current parent, well if you read my email you'll find out more about my, my family situation. But anyway, as a parent to a 15 year old who is currently working in Canvas and me having to tell him go check here, go check here, I want to make sure you know all the places your kiddos should be checking for their work too and as a teacher that you put things in the right places so they can find them. So a little bit of this is going to be pedagogy and you're going to say, Susie, you spend too much on the why, but I like to set up the foundation and then we're going to get into a really practical checklist to make sure that everything you want kids to find, they're able to find it. So stay tuned. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the calendar. That's the obvious landing place in Canvas for everything. And then after we get through the pedagogy of the calendar, I want to talk about how to make sure other things show up on your calendar where you need them to be. Stay tuned. So as promised, here are your top reasons for using a calendar with your students. First of all, you're allowed to color code by course. So this isn't so much of a how to, but you will have those later in the module. But Canvas calendars are color coded, so it allows students and you to be able to see at a glance, okay, here's my biology, here's my English, or if you're in elementary school, maybe you teach the same kids all day, but they can see what's going on in their reading versus their language arts. So it allows you to do that color coding, which is really an important strategy for allowing kids to manage their time. Also, kids can see everything in one spot, and I'm going to refer to the parents a lot because honestly, you might under, have the kids understanding you just fine <laughs> when they're in class, but what if they're working from home, especially in this time of remote or digital learning? Uh, what if their parents are trying to help the kid get on track? Then it allows them to see everything in one spot. Also, you can adjust dates. So let's say that you've kind of got some things clumped together. You've got, oh, you're like, oh shoot, there's a big project, there's a big test. I, I can see that now because I've got my calendar all laid out. It allows you to make you know, decisions that will allow your kids to manage their time better because everything's maybe not chunked at once. Sometimes we plan things out and then when we see them on the calendar, we think, oh, that's probably not a good due date there. Or maybe that's the Friday before Thanksgiving or something. It allows us to space things out a little bit better. What else? When you write something down, you cement those dates in your mind. So just like any time I make a list, it helps me remember it without even having to look at the list. So a calendar will do that same thing. It also allows you to do long range planning or allow your students to do that. So if you put in your dates in advance, which we'll talk about uh, some benefits of that hopefully later in this module, but if you don't just put things in after you've already said them, yes, that's an amen for that. Um, if you'll put things in as soon as you announce them in class. So for example, you know, as soon as I tell my kids I have a test, I go ahead and put it on my Canvas calendar. I'm not ready to put a grade in yet. I tell the parents, listen, this is something I'm announcing in advance, so you're, they're not going to see any grades for it yet. But if I put those dates in as soon as I see them or as soon as I'm ready for kids to know about them, then they can plan for the long range rather than just, oh, this grade already happened. The calendar allows them to look ahead instead of just backwards. It's perfect for that visual learner. I don't know about you, but I like to see things laid out. There was a, a day a few weeks ago when I thought, oh, my word, I cannot accomplish everything on my calendar. But once I laid everything out, looked at it side by side, all the projects I had going on, I actually did have pockets of time I wasn't familiar with. So think about your students or you who are those visual learners. They can see everything at a glance. Then just a few more. What I love about the Canvas calendar in particular is that you can have graded assignments living on there and you can also have non-graded events. So anything you want to announce to your students, you do have an announcements feature, but if you want that to be tied to, again, the calendar, everything's in one place, then you can add an assignment or an event and they all coexist. I love the notification piece. I want you to think about how Remind 101 does not have to be your babysitter anymore <laughs> or your second tool. And I know it's called Remind now. That tells you how long I've been using it since it was just Remind uh, 101. Um, but students can see those notifications and so can you when things are coming up. And then finally, it forms again that guidebook for parents. I know we're like, well, the kids should be doing the work. Absolutely. But if you have a child who is not motivated or not organized, it's good to have a parent who will help give them that little bitty, you know, kick in the tail. And so a calendar can assist with that as well. Both as a teacher and as an instructional technology specialist, I've had a couple different kinds of calendars. And we've talked about, of course, you need a calendar. Um, I've had one that I would keep on paper and then export to PDF, like this one from way back in the day over here on the left. Or I've had this Google Calendar. And let's talk about why neither of these is the best solution for when you're using Canvas. First of all, paper calendars, like the one I have on the left, which ultimately is a piece of paper, 
They become out of date every time a fire drill or a pep rally or a snow day or your kids don't get the curriculum, you know, causes a scheduling delay. The same is true if you upload that calendar from a doc. You will have an obsolete copy on your Canvas account all the time or you'll have to keep uploading it over and over. It's just a pain in the neck. So as I've coached hundreds of teachers, that's not an exaggeration because I coached in a whole district, but um, as I've coached hundreds of teachers on the calendar, there was always a lot of pushback of, I've already got these calendars done elsewhere. But if the paper calendar is what you're comfortable with, just think about how often that's going to become obsolete and you're going to have to keep re-uploading it. Or if you're familiar with a Google calendar, which I know you are, then that's wonderful. It's embeddable. But here's the deal. If you just link to a calendar or embed a calendar, your calendar is its own entity. And so students and parents might see yours, but they don't see yours alongside all their other courses. They can't color code or turn it on or off or be able to see everything in a snapshot. So it really, it might be easy to maintain a Google calendar and embed it, but it's not efficient for your students who are trying to manage all their courses in one place. So just keep that in mind. So now that we've talked about the why of the calendar, how does stuff even get to your calendar? Well, the good news is if you're taking something for a grade, it automatically populates there. So let me just show you a few examples. Remember, I'm a fan of modules, so if you want kids to be able to find your work, I say put it in a module and make it really clear. Now, I have had lots of teachers reach out since I started, you know, sharing different series. <laughs> Y'all know I have several series on Canvas for Littles and then Canvas Basics and blah, blah, blah. But as I've had teachers reach out, a lot of them are dating their modules and they're doing things like week of or even day of for my younger, for my teachers of younger kids that may have, you know, several subjects embedded in one module. So the bottom line is just to make sure that your module contains everything you need kids to find. But then if you want them to have a checklist of what's actually going to be graded, which I think is really important, then you know they know they're not failing your class, then within that module, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that things are going to the calendar. So like I said, things that are graded automatically go there. For example, this is a discussion. I can tell because of the little icon. So I'm gonna click into that discussion and I'm going to make sure it has a date on it. I think I have June 30th, so let me you know, move that up so we can see it on the calendar. I'm going to say graded, okay? And as I do that, it'll ask me what date to put on it. Now, something else you could do, you're saying, Susie, I don't want this for a grade, I just want it to be something that they know to do, so I could make this do October 12th or whatever. The other thing I could do is I don't have to take it as graded. I can say instead, I can uncheck that and say add to to do. So there's an option there for if I want something graded, it's going to automatically go to the calendar. If I want it to be, you know, where they can find it on the calendar on the to do bar, but I don't want to take a grade, then on discussions, I can click add to student to do. So I can still make it due on a certain day, but I'm not going to really add points for it, okay? So I'm going to save that. It's your prerogative. You can do what you want to do. Either option there. And now when I go to my calendar, if all is well with the world, I should see it there. Yep, there it is. It shows the discussion even though it's not for grade. It's in that same place, okay? So let's go back. I'm going to go back to that module again. And let's look this time at an assignment. Well, Suze, if you could find one. Okay, so I have a discussion there. This one was an assignment. Okay, again, these dates are old. You can tell these are from the summertime videos. But when I go into this assignment, I'm going to change the date again. An assignment's meant to be graded. You're not going to see that option of do you want to grade it or not, okay? Now, the points are up to you. But it's going to automatically be graded. But if you want to make sure it's on the calendar, again, you've got to give it a good to-do date or a good due date. I'm mixing up two different things in my mind. So again, I'm gonna make this due on the 13th. Let's give my pretend students not everything at once. And that's gonna go to the calendar. And then if you want, uh, the last little option I wanted to show you. So quizzes go to the calendar, they have a date associated. Um, assignments do. Discussions, you can say graded, put a date on, it'll go to the calendar or just add to to do. Or I even have had some teachers that say they make a daily list of what the kids are supposed to do. So if they had you know, a page that was called, let me make one with you. They have a page that was called Activities for 10, 14, 2020, and they wrote a whole list. Please complete activities below and turn in when finished. I like to remind kids they have to turn them in or I can't see them. And then they could make their list or whatever. 
Um, the reason that some teachers choose to do this is because they're doing things that are off-site. Maybe they are doing a seesaw activity or uh, they're doing something like, I, I met with a, a teacher last week that was doing something on a science website. So maybe not everything's in Canvas and they want a really nice list and they want parents and students to be able to find it. Here's what's so cool. Similar to a discussion, even though pages don't have a grade associated, I can add it to the to-do. I can give it a to-do, I can give it a due date. I'm going to probably say that three more times. And then when I save and publish, which would be a better page than that, then I go to my calendar and those activities are all showing right here. They're also showing on that student's dashboard if I were a student. So let me go into, let's see if it'll let me do that for a pretend student, shall we? So on my, in my settings, let me go into a course. Okay, and I'm gonna go to student view. Remember, it's on the home button or under settings. Then I can see these to-do items right here. So they're showing up on the to-do, which is like a little notification. They're also showing up on the calendar. And depending on the notifications that the child has set, uh, they can also see them uh, you know, on their phone or whatever app they're using. I wanna end because this video was all about making sure that you know where to put things and then kids know where to find them. So a couple ways to communicate with students and parents if you're not already using these. You have in Canvas an inbox, and if you go to your inbox and you click your pencil, mine's gonna be very lame because I'm using just a free account where I don't have any students or anything, but you select the course and it can send a whole broadcast message to who's in that course. So I can select a person or I can go to my address book and say, hey, everybody in this or just teachers or just observers or blah, blah, blah. I can pick a, a particular student so you would use the inbox if you want to send a private message or it's very email-like and it can even copy to email. Maybe I'll show that as a quick tip video one day, but it can even you know, send a full text to someone's email address if they have that notification or that setting turned on. So this allows you to do attachments and you can still do like a video recording, um, but this inbox will be basically your in Canvas email system. Now, if you're going to be sending a group message where you know they might reply, please, for the love of all that is good, <laughs> check this box that says send an individual message. Don't trap people in a group message. I hate that. I'm sure you do too. So the inbox is one way to make sure kids know what to do, but also uh, don't forget about your announcements feature. I know that in my um, Canvas for Littles, I showed a whole segment on making uh, announcements ahead of time or making them cute, but just let's talk about just making an announcement. If you go to the word announcements, and you do plus announcement, it will allow you to post something right inside Canvas. You can even in your settings change and make your most current announcement show up. But I can just do an announcement right here and it can take the place of something like Remind or Remind 101 depending on how long you've been teaching. But you can delay posting and things like that. So you have announcements or inbox if you need to also push some kind of a further clarification to your kids. Maybe they're just getting used to Canvas and you need to say, hey guys, every day I want you to check the calendar and then go to the module for all your instruction piece. Um, I'm gonna go into settings really quick. I'm gonna leave this and try to see if I can figure out while you're watching, now I'll pause it, but I'm gonna show you how to make sure that your most current announcement shows at the top of the page, stay tuned. Here it is, I knew it was here and it wasn't too hard to find. So I went into my settings and I'm just on the main tab under course details. Down at the bottom there was a setting that said like more options right here. And then right here it says show recent announcements on the home page. You can do that and then just show the most recent or top three or whatever. And then every time they log in, they will see that announcement. Let's see if it picks up automatically. If I go to the home page, recent announcements, guess not, because I probably didn't have a date on the one I have, but it'll show right here under recent announcements. And that could be a good feature as well. So I hope now you know how to make sure your kids know what to do how to tell them that, and you're putting things in all the places they should be to make sure they go on the calendar. Now, if you've come to the end of this video and you're thinking, Susie, you never taught us how to actually like use the calendar. I did teach you that, it was in a different video. So if you will look, I always figure, I can't figure out which way to point. <laughs> if you look at the video right there, it's called Using Canvas as a Newsletter. And you can even skip ahead if you want to, to the 555 mark. I talk about how to use a calendar, how to add things, color code, all that jazz. So if you need the very basics, go back to that video. Thanks. Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you want to gamify, playlist for that. And all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? 
go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.